Antonio about a week before the election. Between the patients that came in there and my practice, I could just, I, I just ask questions and listen. Okay, so let me. Uh, so I hope I'm making sense. Yeah, you do. You're making sense, okay? Because I, I was listening to George Frazier, who's a motivational speaker. He's on the same level as Les Brown, and he was saying that um, the whole world is looking at us, African Americans. Mm -hmm. The whole world is on us because you know our you unique situation here in the United States, and then the fact that um, Obama, you know, he was president and. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and er the whole world watches us, okay, if everybody, if we all decided to shave our heads and everybody else would do it, we're just the leaders in everything, okay, <laughs> all, all across the board, you know that, right, so, basically, um, when I'm asking about the, 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 the politics, um, now it's on a worldwide level, mm -hmm. okay, so, um, with Obama, um, being, um, his father being an immigrant, uh -huh. okay, and his mother being an American, then that's, that satisfies that particular walk in life. Then Michelle Obama being a um, descendant of slaves here mm -hmm. in America. So, therefore, that's a unique, two different thoughts right there, as yeah. far as their... Um, Becoming. Yes. Becoming. Yes. So I have a thing called the three B's okay. that I'll teach you how to be, how to behave, and how to become. Life is a process of becoming, and I don't think we ever get there. I really think that that's important. It's part of evolving. That's exactly right. Okay, so... Yeah, so, so, uh, so everybody has a history of, of where they came from, and so, I, so it's, already, it's deep and it's rich. And I would tell you, I, 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 it's interesting that you said that, because um, if I look at all the people I train, the people that the people that's making the biggest contribution look like me and you. And I think I said that yesterday, uh, yes. on Friday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We tend to care about who we are and what we do as a people. We have, we have we have all this mess out there in the community, though, and all of that. But that's because of the fact that all the people, all the African Americans that uh, were middle class left the community, and they moved out because they had money and all of that. So and they're so, all in the suburbs, so they're not they, in the they, um, they inner don't, city right now. They don't see me every day. If I was in the community where they saw me, then someone want to be me. But if they never see you, how they gonna want to be you? They don't know. That's correct. That's kind of what segregation did. That's what that did to Mayflower. So now we so have my so for for example, my cousin, he lived with me in college. He was the CHP, California Highway Patrol. He was the head of the whole Texas Department of Public Safety for about six years. And he, he just, he left Austin, built a big old home down there by the high, uh, not too far, you know, where we grew up. And uh, so he is, he and my brother now, I've uh, had some little program where they mentor the kids now, they, they, uh, the, the young black males. So the, the, the grubs and the crime that used to be in, uh, the city, it's in the country. Yes. It's, it's in the country. So my, I have a, my, my, my brother, I'm telling you, his son was at Stephen F. Austin, and he has a record. They got stopped and they had some marijuana in the car. And then he, I don't know, he did, I mean, it ain't like he's a bad kid, but he around the wrong folks. Well, Texas and, has, and, has strict marijuana laws. Oh, they horrible. Yeah, I, yeah they said one, one seed gave you 10 years in, in jail. It could, yeah. That's what, when I was when I was there, and they were making announcements. It's it's getting a little better, you know. Okay, so now, if like you were saying, if the if we have economic segregation, so if the inner city kids could have someone that's on a higher level, let's say the the, the neighbor, your neighbor, and you're a doctor, then that would give them something to aspire to. That, well, that's my point, and uh, well, I just think that the well, that that's kind of what happens when they see you and you engage in the community. The church is there. If you see kids doing stuff, you go encourage them because you don't, you know, back then you don't just live in your house. You go out, you talk in the yard, you see someone go riding down the street in the bicycle, you know, you engage in conversation and you ask them, man, what are you gonna be? What are you What are you doing? So that's my point. 
And so if the only thing you're seeing is the gang and just that the violence and the crime and all of that, see, violence is a public health issue. It's not just, uh, um, there's a guy named Dr. Hood uh, that at the, uh, the Boulay meeting uh, October 15, who we were at the Ritz-Carlton down in the, what, the Laguna Niguel, and uh, he gave a talk on a post-traumatic slavery disorder, PTSD. And uh, he and he had uh, about six things that lead into that. So he, uh, it's like housing, violence, uh, if anybody been incarcerated in the home, I don't know, it's all those things. And that leads to uh, chronic stress and allostatic load, which leads to chronic disease. And if you haven't looked this up, look up the ACE study, A-C-E. Google it. Uh, we had a, I uh, can't remember which department, but we had a, one of the big visiting lectures last year. A guy named Dr. Folletti out of San, UC San Diego and Kaiser. But he studied like 17,000 patients. And... Uh, and he talked about uh, it's 10 things that uh, leads to this all related to behavior and emotional aspect of, and, and the psychosocial aspect of who we are. So it's uh, emotional neglect, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, violence in the home, anybody being incarcerated. That, that's the ACE study. And if, you have, if four or five of those things are positive, then you're going to have chronic disease, you're going to have issues. So basically... That's the same as if we were um, in another country in a war-torn zone in that country and how that affects the people, post-traumatic stress from that particular That's exactly environment. Right. That's exactly so our right. environment is exactly the same without the bombs. That's exactly right. And the, but we have the guns, but we don't have the bombs right now. Right, I understand. Yeah. No, I, I, would, uh, I would agree with that. And so then uh, you don't have the black teachers, you don't have that black core that cares and, and, and is committed to, to teaching in inner city schools to, to have change. And so uh, I was listening on the radio coming back from Riverside last night. Uh, I was on the NPR and uh, they were interviewing uh, some people out of San Diego that had had tough lives and they were talking about how they got turned around and, and what happened and all that. And it all relates to family. I, I, uh, when I look at situations in our community, uh, whatever community, uh, I always say, um, if something happened bad, I, would, I always say that there was no love in it. And if it was really bad, I just say that there was no love and respect. So what got broken the love triangle? And so the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians uh, is, is where you're going to read about love. And they'll tell you what it is and what it's not. And so was well, some family at home, there was some drugs, there was some, I don't know, whatever. But it, it all comes to that. So, so I had a guy yesterday. Uh -huh. He had an ulcer on the bottom of his foot. He just got diagnosed with diabetes. He's 34 years African American. He looked a bit older than 34, uh, but you could just touch him. It was like he was about to kill him. And it's, uh, you know, and I, so he had a big blister. Uh, and uh, Dr. D'Amico tried. I guess he tried to trim it, but he probably needed to go to the operating room. But he didn't want to go to the operating room, and, and you know, and, and about it, you know, it had been. Three or four in the morning, before I probably got in there because they had a lot of trauma and other sicker things that need to go. So uh, I, I I just broke bread with him, and then I had two new consults. So I told her, uh, I asked the students some questions that I didn't ask for her to go back. So basically, uh, I can't. I have to go read his note. I don't remember all the details. But the bottom line was that he was in South Central. Uh, he been he still smokes marijuana. But he's been on that, on the edge, on that side, all pretty much most of his life. He does yards and does that kind of work now. And he, and he oh, he, uh, the, the biggest thing that I connected with him that he he was Christian, and so that's how I was able to uh, uh, get him to relax a little bit. So I thought quoting some Bible, and you know, he, he was a nice guy. And he really, he said, "Doc, give me a hug." He said, "I'm so proud." He said, "I'm so happy that you helped me today." So he was very appreciative. After I ended up numbing his foot. And uh, and cut that ulcer out and opened it up a little bit to be sure that his uh, tendon that uh, been his toe down wasn't infected. And you know blood blood flow is good, so he's gonna heal up okay, you know from all that. But it's all from the issues that was going on within his uh, within his life, the psychosocial aspect. 
And then he told me he was bipolar. That's what he told me. So the, the, the whole stress of him living under stress his whole entire life from conception, birth, to up to 34 years, it creates all kinds of havoc health-wise. Mm -hmm. And so he's because, just a product of his environment. Right. So what happens is uh, when you, uh, uh, everybody knows right and wrong. And they may not know it, but when you're on the edge, uh, there's some fear in that. And so the nervous system don't respond normally, and you, you're not normal. Your feet sweat more, you know, you get hyper, you know, you, you, know, you have worry, you know, all that stuff comes in, creeps in. And that's why they say uh, there's no pill that's soft as a clear conscience. You know, if you ain't done that wrong, you sleep good every night. So now... Well, that's um, God is in control. So do you see yourself getting involved since everything is politically connected, do you see yourself getting involved in the second part of your career in politics? Well, that, everybody been wanting me to run for politics for the last 25 years, but I don't know that I want to run for politics. I don't want to do that. You want to back somebody? I, I'm, I'm involved in politics at a high level. I have always have. I learned that from Dr. Bogey. That means you don't have to... Being in medicine and being in a, in a, in a, an educator and all of that, I've had a platform to talk about whatever, whenever I want to, and I'm very respected. So I think that's the important part, and I think that I've been able to impart that to all the residents I've trained, whether they're white, black, blue, or brown. Because being a podiatrist, the white boys understand that we second class just like blacks in the 50s and 60s. I understand it even better, because I had to deal with it because of my color. Mm -hmm. But as a profession, it's, it's the same thing, it's just professional. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so that's and I don't know whether that's the internal thing in me, but, I mean, I care. And so that's where I'll spend my time working on those things to elevate our profession at the same time. And so my, my big thing now is uh, how do I go from success to significance? That's what that is now. I've been very successful. So how do you go be significant in, in your contributions over the next 10 years? Okay. I'm going to turn the camera off just